So Nintendo have just released their Direct for September and in this video I'm going to break down my highlights of the games I found interesting and the features that they have announced. So first up is Chocobo GP. Like a lot of franchises, Square Inc have now gone down the route of a racing game so with their Final Fantasy characters you can now have a multiplayer racing game and to be honest although it looks very similar to like a Mario Kart style I was actually very impressed the idea that you can get multiple power-ups you can increase these power-ups if you collect the same ones to get even more powerful powers I found superb and chaotic but hey that's what makes a game great and also you seem to have a signature move for each character which allows you to turn the tables very very quickly and that to me screams challenging while also being incredibly fun you can also do local play or online play so ideally play on your own if you need to complete the story modes and also they've set an up to 64 player tournament like 8x8 elimination which makes this game worth buying all on its own so looking forward to that one next up is Kirby and the Forgotten Land now when this one first started I thought oh what's this game gonna be the environment looked really cool the the fact that it's like a deserted shopping mall kind of gave the sort of Day of the Dead vibes and you know post-apocalyptic worlds and then as it fades and goes into the game you realize it's a Kirby game now again being a bit skeptical at first watching the gameplay that is coming up I was very very impressed I think this could be one of the biggest games of 2022 for the Nintendo Switch so as you go into it, it looks like you wake up on a beach, you've got to make your way through the forest and actually discover this entire forgotten land, hence the name. But the environment, the, the detailing, I think looks absolutely brilliant. It's completely sort of like a, an open world map, a great sort of 3D platformer. I think there's going to be plenty of adventure elements, mysteries, puzzles, everything to solve from a cartoon based Nintendo Switch game. I've got to say, this looks by far the best game that they actually announced for their Direct. Well, it wasn't their highlight, I don't know, but when you look at the gameplay, the vibrancy, the colours, the detail, I mean, look at these aliens, it's like, damn, the luminosity, the brightness, it just screams a fun game. And obviously you can get little power-ups as you go along, you kind of absorb people's abilities, that is Kirby's thing. And obviously the amount of different ones you can get will make the game even better, even more interesting. And then obviously you come against like big final bosses, which is standard for a lot of games anyway, but I just think having all these different elements makes this such a fun game. So that is my biggest highlight of the game, Spring 2022, I cannot wait, I think this is going to be a brilliant game. Next up is Dying Light 2, Stay Human. Again, this one kind of gives the same sort of vibe, post-apocalyptic, which funny enough it is, as it runs on from the original Dying Light, and this whole parkour post-apocalyptic survival game is something that I wanted to bring as a highlight because it's not something that I would personally think of for the Nintendo Switch so I'm glad that this game is available on there because it might utilize a couple of good motion controls or it just gives you a different variety than the standard cartoony RPGs and platformers that you do get on the console definitely something that's worth checking out with that as well, they've also put in the Dying Light Platinum Edition, which is coming out sooner. So if you wanted to kind of get the prequel in, have a play with that, I think, again, it sets the story up nicely, ready for the second game. So two Dying Light games, you've got the Stay Human Cloud version, and then you've got the Platinum Edition of Dying Light, which is released on the 19th of October, so really not long to wait. 
Now, the next one, I believe is Nintendo's highlight, which is also worth mentioning because I think this will be a good game, is Metroid Dread. Now, they teased this at E3, and now we've got a bit more of an extensive look at the game, which again, I think it does look very, very fun. I think it's a sort of like horror survival game, you know, although it's done as a 2D platformer, I think you're still going to get a lot of good Metroid elements. You're going to get unique boss fights, upgrades, puzzles to solve, whilst also trying to avoid all these kind of cybernetic life forms. And speaking of that, this looks like maybe this is some sort of upgrade version of the blaster. There we go. Upgrade suit so we can move it faster, have different special abilities. Again, I think Metroid Dread is one to watch. I don't think it's going to be the best game of this year, but I still think it's going to be a very good title to um, to play. I think they've invested a lot in this. So let's see what happens when it's released. You won't have to wait long, as it's going to be released on the 8th of October, so only a few weeks away. And finally, I wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking about Nintendo's new online feature. So you get your Nintendo Switch Online, but now there's a Nintendo Switch Online Plus expansion pass, which gives you new content for members. Now, this paid expansion pass gives you access to the old Nintendo 64 games. Now, it's not going to be a lot of them to start with, but they're going to increase the catalogue as you go along. So you get Zelda, Mario, Yoshi, Nintendo 64 Dr. Mario then, Lilac Wars, which is a great game. So having all these games at your disposal, similar to what they do with this current membership where you can play the NES games and the SNES games, you're able to do online multiplayer as well. So with that, you have the Nintendo 64, plus you also have the Sega Genesis titles. Which again, there's only going to be a select few to start with. And I'm assuming as they go along, they'll increase the catalogue and add more Genesis games as well. I'm a bit mixed with this because you can get a lot of these games already through multiple different releases. And especially with the Nintendo 64, they just released Mario 64 as part of the 35 year collection. And they're releasing it again as a paid membership. Now, full details of the pricing of this hasn't been released as of yet, so as soon as that does, we'll get a little bit more information on whether it is actually worth it or not, but they're planning to launch it late October, so in a month's time, we'll know exactly what it's going to be. Plus, they do state here that if you have an existing membership plan, you can also port over your membership plan by paying the difference, so you're able to upgrade to the expansion pass plan without repaying for your monthly membership. And here they're going to release the certain games for Nintendo 64. You've got seven titles there. And for the Genesis, they're going to release 14 titles. Now hopefully, we're looking at about £5 a year cost for this, but we'll see. Also here, they announced that you've got new games that will be released, so Majora's Mask Legend of Zelda, F-Zero X, Mario Golf, Pokemon Snap, and Kirby, Paper Mario, and also Banjo-Kazooie. So they're planning new game releases, which is great. Now, this section is a little bit disappointing. They've announced two new controllers, the Nintendo 64 controller and the Genesis controller, to release at $50 each, which I don't understand their marketing point here. Why not give the expansion pass and the controllers as a bundle? It would get people to buy them more, but, but there you go. So thank you for watching my highlights from the Nintendo Direct for September 2021. I'll see you again soon for another video. Bye for now.